One of the first things I want to go over for the application setup is the card creation setup in the application. So if you're going to use cards other than uh, network cards or fleet cards or bank cards that are going to authorize uh, via some sort of host, and you would like to use a local card file, like a keyboard entry or uh, one of our proprietary cards, like a magstrip card, chip key, one of those, then we'll need to turn on that feature into the application to allow for that proprietary card setup to be complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under settings and we're going to go under organization. Under organization, we're going to select define card record. And here, if proprietary cards is turned off, you'll simply want to make sure that this is enabled. This is going to allow the system to create driver cards, vehicle cards, or single cards in the application. And these are going to be used to authorize local transactions on your fuel site controller. So once we enable the proprietary cards, we need to dive into the system a little bit further to determine how are you going to use the cards? What type of cards should you like to use? What kind of restrictions are we going to set up? And we're going to dive into the card process in another section here. But the first thing I want to do is just kind of go over what some of these features are and how to turn them on. So using a single entry system is simply using one card to authorize a certain transaction. So that can be one keyboard entry, one max strip, uh, or any of the formats that you're using, but you only have one piece of data and it's allowing you to start that transaction as long as that number is considered valid. In the application, you could define that as a driver only card, a vehicle only card, or both. What that basically means is when you go to create a card, it's going to let you create one card for each particular authorization number, and you can label that in the application as a D for driver or a V for vehicle, or you can create either one of those options, but all the cards are going to be treated in a singular manner. They only need one card, and they're not using any other additional information for authorization, at least, uh, to allow that transaction to go through. The second option here is a dual entry system. Dual entry system works the same as a single card, except you're gonna require two cards. Those cards don't necessarily need to be both physical cards. One could be a keyboard entry, one could be a physical card. They could both be keyboard entry or they both could be physical cards. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as the system is set up in the right way to read both of those file formats. So when we use a dual system, we are going to have the ability to say, track the driver and the vehicle, because each of those are gonna have their own card number. So if somebody fuels uh, one driver, they may fuel a different vehicle today than they do tomorrow, and now we know this particular driver fueled which vehicle. So it gives you a little bit more information on the transaction, and you could track it with a little bit more information as well. So if we're gonna use that system, we now need to determine are we going to restrict who is fueling what? And if we are going to do so, how do we want the transaction to be tracked in the application? So if we're gonna use driver and vehicle combination cards, we need to select one of these restriction methods. The first one means that we're not restricting the driver or the vehicle based on any given account that they're in. So if we are going to just have two valid cards, it doesn't really matter what account you create those cards in, they will be able to fuel. Now, because the account is not being tracked and we're not restricting anybody based on account, the system wants to know, how do you want that transaction to show up in the system? It's gonna need to associate that transaction with a certain account. So do you want it to associate the transaction with the driver specific account? or the vehicle specific account. This is just purely, how are you gonna generate the report based on this transaction? Do you want it to show up by this or by this? Typically, vehicle specific account is what majority of our clients use, uh, but both options are available to you. The second option here for driver vehicle tracking restricted. What this means is we are now going to determine who can fuel based on the account that they're in. And if the driver and the vehicle are in the same account. 
So what that means is if you have a driver in account, let's say 1,000, and they're trying to fuel a vehicle in account 2,000, here that would be restricted. They would need to be in the same account in order for the driver to be able to fuel that particular vehicle. Because that restriction is enabled, when the system first swipes the first card, it's going to look to see if that card is considered valid and what account it's in. Then it'll prompt you for the second card. You insert the second card, it's going to do that same check. If they're in different accounts, then at that point you would get an error message at the time of fuel and it would not allow that particular driver to fuel that particular vehicle. This option is similar uh, to the one below it, but there is a little bit of a leeway there. So we have a restriction for everything needs to be in the same account, but we have a status of uh, no associated account, which means you can assign the driver or the vehicle to a non-account specific account, which is basically meaning they are considered global and they can cross fuel amongst different accounts. So if you have a driver that is in no associated account and you have a vehicle, it could be in any account. And because that driver is considered global, they will be able to fuel uh, and they would not be restricted based on any of the accounts. You could do that for the driver or the vehicle, but anything that's created will need to have an account associated to it. So you can either assign no associated account or you can assign a particular account which would enable that restriction. The bottom option here is mainly the same as the middle one, except there's no global account. There's no option to do no associated account. Each driver needs to be in the same account as the vehicle if you would like them to fuel, and there's no cross-fueling allowed in that scenario. So this is the most restricted option. One thing to also consider uh, when you're using driver vehicle non-restricted, the fuel site controller in that case does not know your accounts. It, the application is not sending the account data to the fuel site controller, and that's why it's not being restricted by an account. In the, the middle and the last option, those accounts are going to the fuel site controller so that the controller can do that check. This checkbox here for allow use of single entry system means that you are using all three card types in the system. You're gonna use the ability to do a single card, you're gonna be able to use a driver vehicle combination card, and you can do all three of those combinations when you're creating cards. Just know single cards still only use one card to authorize and driver vehicle cards use two. Um, you will just have an option in the card creation page to check a box that says this is gonna be a single card as opposed to a driver vehicle combination card. Down here at the bottom, we have a list of the restrictions that we can enable for the system. Some of these restrictions you may use and some of them you may not use, but there are limitations as it comes to both. So you'll wanna look at our restriction section in the training to go over more details about the restrictions. But first off, we would like to just say anything that's enabled here on this menu is gonna show up when you create a new card. Anything that's turned off here will no longer show up in the card creation process. So what you can do is you could set up the system with only the restrictions and things that you would like, and you could turn off anything that you're not gonna use, and that will allow your card creation process to be a lot quicker and more streamlined. For example, if we are no longer using pin numbers on a system, if you turn this off, it simply won't prompt you to enter a pin when you create a card. If we have product and quantity restrictions turned on, then those features will be enabled and you will have drop-down lists of selections for those restrictions. And it won't show you any of these other things that you may not be using. So it's just a simple way for you to streamline the card creation process. Once again, all of these things that are set up here need to be configured on the fuel site controller so that they work in the same way and the system understands how the system is set up. So either we can set it up here and then send them down to the fuel site controller, or we can set them up on the controller and simply configure them here in the same way. 
if you were to just turn on a feature here that's not enabled on the fuel side controller, then that feature would not actually send down to the controller correctly unless we were to actually go into our sync page here, which is under settings and sync. And then here we could send the site changes that we made or send the global settings that we made uh, back down to the controller. And that would update your fuel site controller with the changes that we've made in the system. So unless we are doing this, changes here do need to be configured on the fuel site controller either manually or through the sync process in order for some of these changes to actually occur in the application on the fuel site controller to be upgraded uh, in the way that you would like them to be.